Hey folks, welcome to another episode of ASP.NET Core from Zero to Overkill. In this episode, we'll continue to play around with ASP.NET Core identity and Razor pages as we build our authentication service. So, in the previous episode, a long one by the way, we started this authentication service, like I said, with identity and Razor pages and a few other things like entity framework. And uh, we explored some options to start, so we can use the default UI that is provided by a class library that is included when we start a, a new web application and we say to it that we want to, to use individual accounts. We can use the, the scaffolder to create the, the files for identity, or we can do everything from scratch with or without using the identity. In our case, we went to this approach from scratch, but using the identity classes. But we did a lot of copying and pasting from the the scaffolded version. So it's a, a mix of scaffold and from scratch. So we, by doing this, we were able to explore some of our identity classes and what they provide to us. And so far, we've created a login, a logout, a register, and account pages. Not really that much, but at least we saw something working, including database integration and all of that. So in this episode, uh, I'm going for a, an overview of what was done in the previous one, because the video ended up over two hours long, and I'm pretty sure no one will watch everything. So I thought this video it was good to provide an overview of that. So if anyone can just skip that and come to this summary, yeah, go ahead. And then if there are any questions, the comments are there for, for it. So to make sure this video will be much smaller than the last one, I've prepared a good amount of, of things. So in this episode, there will be less typing and more uh, showing what's already there. Even w what I did before this episode, I used a lot of uh, copying and pasting from the scaffold. I've done some adjustments to make things like I wanted to or just to play around with some stuff, but I I'll show you. So this should be a much faster episode. So, so I'll talk about the adjustments I made to the pages we created in the last one. I added some missing pages like for email confirmation, password changing, reset, and all of that. Then I added two-factor authentication using uh, an authentic authenticator app. And like we did in the Entity Framework episode, so because we need a database in this context as well, I'm running the migrations on application start. So I don't have to do it manually every time. And after going through this, uh, we'll see how to include client-side libraries. In this case, Bootstrap. I said I wasn't going to use Bootstrap, but it's just easier and I don't want to waste much time in this. It's important, but I, like I've said in the past, I'm more of a back-end guy. So in the front end, I'll just keep it as simple as possible and not waste too much time. So we'll include Bootstrap using a tool called Libman or Library Manager. And then uh, I'll add the base layout to the pages so they fit together. And I'll add a, a partial view for the status message like the, the scaffold that uh, code has, but I just replaced it with a div. I'll go back to a partial view. And just before we start, I wanted to ask if the series is being useful, and if so, consider consider liking the videos, so and share them, and leave some feedback, comments, or questions if you have anyone. And uh, yeah, because by doing this, it makes me aware if it's being useful or if I'm just wasting time recording this stuff. So by knowing this, I can decide if I continue 
or invest my time in something else. And hopefully, if it's being useful and the feedback is provided, maybe YouTube will start recommending the videos to more people and we'll get even better feedback. So with all of this said, let's get coding or looking at some code and then coding. So let's begin by taking a look at what we did in the first episode. So the first of this about this subject. So we created a, a DB context, which inherits from identity DB context. And we created a playball user, which inherits from identity user. So in this case, it wasn't needed because I'm not adding any, any properties, but this would be the way if we wanted to add more properties to our, to our users would be to inherit and add them because I don't have. So the, this is the DB context that will allow us for, to access the, the users. Let's close this. So for the database, then we created, we have the migrations as required. And uh, there are a lot more pages here than in the, the last episode. But basically what we did was we created the login. It's basically as it was. I just added some, the classes for CSS for when we add bootstrap, it, it's ready. So, but it's basically the same HTML that was here before. And uh, over here as well, it's the same. I didn't touch this part. So in this part, we implement the login logic. On get, we don't do very much, but then on post is where we check if the, we use the sign-in manager, which is a class from identity, provide the username and the password and it, does what it needs to do. So if it signs in, it automatically creates the cookies and sets all of that. That's why using identity is nice. If not, we would have to do all of this. We would need to go to the database, check if the password is correct, then create the, the session, session requirements, put the cookies, everything. By doing this, it's all done for us. Then we just need to check if it succeeded, if it's needed to factor authentication, locked out, all of that. So that was what we did for the lo login. Logout, it's even easier. We just receive that and we sign out whichever user is signed in. So we don't even need to pass any argument because it's in it's already in the information about the claims principle. So if we would go to this dot user, the, all the information is already here and is provided by the, by the authentication uh, middleware that we added to the startup class. So in the startup class, we added this use authentication middleware that checks there, there are cookies and puts them and uh, reads them and puts it in the in the user of for the request so when we log out we just need to go to the sign in manager say sign out and it will take care of validating the cookies what else we also did the register page so like before more of the, the same i just re-added the classes. It will probably need some adjustments, but I'm not that worried about the UI. And in the this part, it's mostly the same. I just, some parts that were a bit unorganized. No, not even that. This is the same. I think I didn't touch anything. Okay, so this is the register part. Again, we have simple things. Just we receive the user information, 
use user manager again from the identity one of the identity classes pass the information about the user the password and create a new user and then there are lots of helpers like generate email confirmation and you will see when I show you the two factor it's again the same it's all provided out of the box by HP.NET identity so most of this code is very very easy and like I said in the previous episode it's really probably much better to just go with the scaffold because it's a lot less work and unless you have some very specific requirement using the scaffold and just adapt is probably the easy way and okay this is for the register and we also did just to see that the user was logged in we created a, an account page this says a bit more things because I, I added the two-factor part like this but the rest is the same and the, also the CSS classes and in the index also mostly the same I just adjusted this part here about the when we change the email because the email and the user's name are the same and I mentioned the, I put the to do that if setting the first setting the email succeeds but then the username fails did this would result in inconsistent data and uh, I even was thinking of opening a ticket on the an issue on the hp.net core uh, github but there is already one so if we go here github add ability to use email as username so they are aware that this is a problem and hopefully they'll fix it in .NET Core, ASP.NET Core Trio that should be live this year, I think. If it's in preview, maybe it will be this year. So for now, I won't do anything because we are just playing around with this. Maybe if this was for production, it would be a good idea. Because we, we are using a relational database, we could just put a transaction and do this in a transaction, so we would avoid this, these problems. But if it wasn't a relational database, it would be a problem. But like I said, if they are aware of the problem, so hopefully we'll have a good solution. So meanwhile, I have this to do for us to get back to this in the future. So besides this, the rest is mostly the same. The user doesn't have very much to edit. The only thing he can edit is the is the email. Of course, can change last breakpoint. Of course, it can change the the password. This was something I added, but we'll, we'll check it out. But this is mostly exactly what comes from the scaffolder and we are just using the identity classes so I don't want to waste too much time with these kinds of things so what I added in the meantime so let's start just with the startup I added some minor things like I am logging when we try to send an email so when we try to do the user registration I can get the email confirmation uh, link so we can confirm the email because we haven't implemented the email sending correctly yet then I added these parts so I'm using a JSTS so like it says here, HTTP, strict transport security. So it forces the, the browser after receiving this header. It will, all, will not allow another request from... Uh, if we are in HTTPS, it can't make another request for HTTP. 
so makes all the requests we we do in our application H, uh, HTTPS and I'm also using HTTPS redirection so when I put in the browser localhost 5000 which is the HTTP endpoint it will redirect to the HTTPS at localhost uh, 5001 so this part's simple you just enter these headers then added email confirmation which is confirm email so not very much here over here on get so this is the link that the user clicks when gets the email so on get just user id find and confirm the email with the id of the user and the code that was generated when you send the email after i walk through this i'll show you this working but you probably already seen it regardless so confirm email is pretty pretty simple as is most of the things because identity just provides all of this out of the box so confirm uh, added the forgot password so again not that much just an input so we can put the email and we receive an email so find by email if this email is confirmed no need if not again user manager from identity generates a password reset token and then we can use it to create a URL then we send email for the user to to reset the password so forgot password change password and reset password we can see reset password ah, confirmation is the page we see after the confirmation is done so reset password it's where you put email the password confirm password no so you can see the the model that, that for razor pages already has this I didn't notice this one this is nice so compare so of course confirm password must be the same as password but we don't need to do anything by hand because apparently this attribute exists I didn't even notice like I said I copied a lot from the scaffolder this is nice so and on get we just show the password and on post we find the user and reset the password again it's easy because it's already implemented if not it would, wouldn't be so easy so reset password what can we see more before going to two-factor login Logout, forgot. We have the change, change password, which is when we haven't forgot but we want to to change. So we input the old or the new password and confirm. Again, the classes are already there. The input model from Razor Pages, and then on get nothing here this part this user manager as password i kept it here but it really isn't important in this case this is to check if it the user has a password for instance if we used google or twitter or facebook to log in so we wouldn't have a password and we want to have a password so it would check if it has a password it, instead of using the change password would use the set password in this case I don't think we ever go to the 
use this because we right now we don't have don't have third party logins and I'm not sure if I'm going to edit maybe just for testing sake but and then on post as usual get user change password again it's a method that already exists on the user manager and we provide the old and the new for it to check if it's correct if not it adds the information to the errors and refresh the sign-in like we saw also in the last episode when we make changes it refreshes the, the session information so change password and not much else before now we can go to the two-factor stuff so for two-factor authentication there are quite a bit of pages not so we have this add application disable two-factor uh, manage two-factor reset two-factor recovery codes and login with two-factor or recovery codes so let's start with mm, maybe in the index created here there are a couple of links so manage or enable if we don't have two-factor enabled and we go to manage two-factor authentication and over here we will have some options I put the application running so CD it's easier the rest was easy but this part is probably better to see what I'm talking about as you'll see by the logs it will run the migrations of the database if I yeah if I didn't forgot to start Postgres okay so it is creating and we are listening so we can go here F5 and we are redirected to the HTTPS version and go so account we need to create a new user which will be okay so let's enable two-factor authentication and over here right now we only have the option to set up an authenticator app we'll have more options when we have this enable so codes and all of that we'll let's go through this first so let's set up an app okay i forgot something this were this was working unable to resolve service for type qr code really let's see i must have changed something and then so let's go to startup okay I forgot I don't know how because it's here but or maybe it was a commit issue so let's add services add singleton IQR code and I'll show you this class in a moment right now let's just see this working but basically this is the class I created to create the QR code that we have here so we are in the setup of configuration you are not seeing but I'm getting my phone so I can use the authenticator app
scanning the barcode, done. Then the code. Okay, so now we have to, to factor recovery codes. Of course, I'm not going to waste time storing this, but we have 10 codes that we can use. We can just try to use them, so I'll copy one. Let's go back to the account. And then log out. Get back. And then I'll use one test. Let's pretend I don't have the authenticator app, so we can log in with the recovery code. And we are in. We can also go back to logout, account, test. And now with the authenticator app, let me check. And we're in, so like you see, we have working two-factor authentication. And if we go back to manage two-factor authentication, we have more options in a hideous form, but we can set up another app. We can reset the authenticator app. We can disable two-factor authentication. In the way it is implemented, I'll show you, but it, it doesn't reset. So this only disables two-factor, but doesn't reset the authenticator keys. And we can reset the recovery codes and get a new batch of codes. Now let's look at the code for all of this. So in manage to factor, like you saw, we have a couple of just a couple of links. So we generate recovery codes. This is basically just changing the text depending on the number of codes left. If there are no codes generate, if there is one generate, if under three also generate with another text and forget this browser so I didn't even test this I'm not sure what this does maybe to for a specific browser don't ask for for two-factor can disable, we can reset the codes. And this is conditional if we have authenticator. We, if you don't have, we want to set up. If we have, we want to set up another or reset the current one. So this is the HTML. Where is manage, manage. There's not a lot going on in this page. We just have a bunch of properties that we use for the condition, like as authentication, recovery codes is enabled. And then on get, we can, we put all of that. All of that comes from user manager or sign in manager. We have the forget. So this page doesn't do a lot. It just acts as a point for us to go to the other pages, like we saw. And then when we are configuring an application, we, we have this page, the add to factor. So this is where I changed a bit what was done. So most of it is the same because we use this, We that code is generated. Let's check the C sharp part. So on get, we load the shared key. So the shared key is that thing we saw. The let's take a look. Manage the factor. Reset. Set up. So this is the shared key. We could input on the phone by hand. But it's the same that's 
using the, the QR code. So there's a shared key and we create the QR code. So the way the scaffolder worked is it basically, you can check, I have it open over here. Pages, not here, areas, identity, pages, count, manage. So where is that? Enable authenticator. So it has some, some links and stuff. And then it has here the QR code and QR code di data because it's expecting to use some. If we see here the to enable QR code generation, please read here and this over here, if I'm not mistaken, talks about using some JavaScript to use the QR codes like this. But I didn't want to use JavaScript. So instead, instead of doing this this way, I created a QR code generator class that we can see. So let's check here. Create a simple interface that receives a target and re returns a string that is a base64 encoded image of the QR code. And then the implementation, I'm using a a library that's skier sharp qr code it's a nuget package so in here we just create a qr code generator and then we create a qr code i'm using i art coded the the size probably not a good idea but it's just for for testing maybe in the future i'll make this configurable right now it it'll create a qr code with 256 by 256 and then I'm just encoding the image and converting the data to a base64 string so then if we go to the chhtml I'm just creating image source base64 png and then model qr code which is the string of the QR code that is generated. So, but this part, the QR code, you can do whatever you want, as long as you put a QR code. I instead, of, I even thought of making an image from uh, really putting here a new URL, but then I remember maybe we don't want that code, that's this shared key. We probably don't want that shared key in a, to be on the logs. So on a get request, it will would be on the logs. So instead, I did this this QR code and embedded it here. So no logs for the image. And yeah, the rest is pretty much simple. So load shared key, we can take a look. It uses the user manager and gets a authenticator key from it. So it gets if it's if it exists. So load authenticator to display. If not, just resets, creates a new one. And then, like I said, like I said, use a generator to get that image. This format key just copied from the scaffolder. Basically, is splitting into four to this format 444 just for easier reading and this is the URL that the QR code will point to so uses this OTP auth protocol and yeah so this is for the configuration of an app and disable just 
probably goes to user manager and to factory enabled false so again it's easy because it's already done then what else manage we have already seen reset to factor app so we set disable we disable the to factor and reset the keys like we saw in that comment on the that we see on the HTML we can just disable without resetting the keys when we re reset the keys we also disable refresh sign in yeah and okay the recovery code is also important we are printing here the the codes and to generate them we just go to the database recovery codes are on yeah temp data because this, this is just the show when we let's take a look at the ad i think it's here recovery codes yeah on post we check that the registration of the app was successful so verify the token if it's valid load shared no if not valid it tries again if it is it enables to factor and checks the recovery codes if there aren't any recovery codes generates new codes with this helper method from user manager and then it puts the recovery codes on the property which is a temp data so when you redirects to page when we are there the the data is there so when we show recovery codes we just access temp data this temp data is probably it's a cookie if i'm not mistaken so it puts right here puts in temp data or it puts it here then the framework will, will probably create a cookie out of it and when it's accessed in the other page then removes the, the data so show recovery codes that's why I, I didn't want to type this all in this episode the, the other one was already way too long and this is easy if we just follow what is done in the in the scaffolder okay then login when the login is successful but let's see if the login is successful but it requires two factor it rather redirects to login with two factor and over here On get is more of the, of the same gets the user for authentication and then on post will when we will receive the information it uses another helper to sign in using two factor with the code and all this information So mostly easy to understand, succeeds, if not, is locked out, if is locked out. And the login with recovery code should be the same. Just use a different method. Sign so manage to factor. Sign in with recovery code. So basically the same. And that's about it for this two-factor stuff. The last thing I've done. Okay, I've done some more things like download personal data. Again, this is the scaffolder already provides this. This is basically 
let's check if we go back to the account page oops we can download my information which downloads a json which opened here in the side so this is the information that was stored in the database for the for this user and download personal data just allows us to download this so we can check the code just out of curiosity but basically it goes to the database gets the user then checks for the user gets all properties apparently there is something called personal data attribute let's check playball user identity user identity so personal data everything that has this is part of that download So we're in the code, it just creates a dictionary of that and creates a file out of it. A JSON file for the user to download the data. But again, I, I didn't even do this page, I just copied this page. It's already done by the scaffolder. Like most of this. The more custom thing I've done was the, the QR code generator. Okay, so that's about it for these pages. And the last thing you already seen if you if you saw the episode on Entity Framework, but basically on the program class, when starting, I'm ensuring the database is up up to date. So on the create an extension method that creates a scope for for us to get the AuthDB context and migrate. So anytime the application starts, it will apply migrations if needed. But this isn't new, I already talked about this in that episode. Okay, so I think this is it for what was already done before this one. So now let's let's take a look at using Libman to include client-side libraries. So Libman library manager it's just really simple tool for us to acquire the client side libraries uh, in a more complex application like the single page application we'll be doing there are better options like in that case we are using npm and using all of that to and webpack and all of that to build our our application in this one, because I'm trying to minimize scripting and all of that, I'm just trying to just a server side rendered all the things that I can, even the QR code. But because we need some CSS to make the application look less hideous, we can use Libman, which is a simple tool. And we'll use it to include Bootstrap in the application. Like I said, I wasn't going to use it, but it's just easier and the scaffolder already provides the classes, so we can just take advantage of that. I was going to use another library, but why? So let's stop this. And in here, for starters, I need to in install because I don't have it installed, I think. So install libman done now we can check here and we have some, some comments so we can see the version and we can see what's more 
So we install init. In this case, we want to init because we haven't used it. So libman init help default provider. So the default is cdnjs, I think. And we can provide the default destination. So let's default, we'll put it in the root slash lib. Default provider cdnjs, okay. So this should have created a JSON file. I'm pretty sure it should have. How can I refresh this? It's there, the Libman JSON. Okay, now it appeared, finally. So, default provider cdnjs, default destination the root lib. And now we can install something. So let's see cdnjs. Let's see bootstrap. Okay, so Twitter bootstrap. Let's go here and Libman install bootstrap. Okay, and it installed. So now ls. Now we should be able to go to the root lib. And we have CSS from bootstrap and JS. And over here we have this. So this is just, from what I understand, really a simple tool to handle these, these libraries instead of using something more complex like npm and grunt and gulp and whatever is used right now in the JS land. So probably this wouldn't be enough if I was doing more script kind of uh, things and needed to minima minify and and all of that usual things but because i'm trying to avoid all of this all of that this will be enough and i just want to include bootstrap so now we need now we have bootstrap installed we can we can we need to go to pages and create a layout page mvc view no no layout where is it? I've seen that. I'm pretty sure I've seen how to create the layout over here. Okay, no worries. If I'm not mistaken, let's take a cue from here. So we, in the pages, shared layout. This is what we need. So we'll create pages, new directory, shared, add. Okay, that's why it wasn't appearing I needed to create the lay the, the shared folder razor layout layout title render body I'll put this in a div and put the classify container yes and we need to include 
we need to include the CSS so it should be here so we should be able to link bootstrap CSS I think we should be we should have a let me just check here I think we need this check okay so let's see if this is working watch one let's see hopefully it works because I don't want to waste time playing around with CSS oh no I still miss over here I need to add a view start Shouldn't it be over here? Let me check. It should be outside. And we want layout. Yes. What about now? Oh, so hideous. Okay. It's more colorful, at least. Not really prettier, but okay so at least we are using the layout if we want to enable this reset reset set up another okay okay but this is working so let's go here the logout page should be the logout button logout so index is where we have this so this button here should be then then secondary and we should put this in the layout but not in that layout because we just want this in these pages so let's create a new layout or not this will be interesting I want a layout of a layout another way out and want let's go here I want hp.net core razor layout with inherit level so one layout inherits from the other okay so should be instead of layout we should call it 
Maybe this works. And we need the view start over here that uses as the layout public. Check the post, not this way. Oh, not public. Out. Is this needed? It is. Share the count. And this one. Okay. Will this work? We need in this account. We need to get this logout button. Another great copy and paste. Okay, logout is there. Hideous as always. Enable. Logout. Okay. It's working. This is hideous, but I won't waste time during recording to make this pretty or less ugly I'll do this after after the episode no need to waste time okay so we have the layout we have the the logout part of the layout on the private pages so in the log when we are logged out we don't have that so seems nice so to finish up let's create a partial for the the messages because if you noticed everywhere I'm using it it's just this div status message but what we want is something like the scaffolder did oh I will almost forgot something I wanted to do so in the layout over here we're using bootstrap not minified, but we can do min. But this is a bad example because we don't, probably don't want to check the code for Bootstrap. But if it was our 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 CSS, we would want to maybe see the code. So we can use a tag helper. That's in environment. And in the name of development, I put this here, and we can then 
put another one I think it's excludes development so in development we will get bootstrap complete and in all other environments we can uh, you we want the minified version instead of this we could just do names equals uh, staging production but i think it's easier to make to exclude development so everything will get the minified version and if we want another we just add the over here for instance docker dev or something like that and over here exclude and everything will always get the min it's probably easy easier than just putting all environments here if we go here to the the example by the scaffolder it just oh it is use exclude nice last time i saw i've seen something like this it was include and everything so we can just use include but the names i think would do mostly the same and then they are using something something else we are just including it directly bootstrap but they are also using a, a CDN to fetch the library version and then if it can't access the CDN then it will fall back to the to the the version the local version but it's interesting but it has directly the version and if we are using the version that comes from libman and then we update it we need to remember to come update it here eh, I'm not in the mood so I'll just use it always like this okay so now if we go here let's check the e network so bootstrap minified if we did if we did the other way around it's getting both okay so why is it getting both i don't understand So we, we are in development, so I was expecting it to get, in this case, the minified version, only, not the full version. Although the minified is not much smaller, but okay. So if we go here, I hope this is only because of cache and uh, all of that let's, let's see the head it's including both this is wrong so I want mean excludes unless I'm that's the problem exclude yep it's the same problem as always between the chair and the screen so bootstrap minified so now if we make exclude include now we get bootstrap full okay now that's that's better X as, as expected so let's close this and wrap up going back to the status message so let's check here for the status message if we go to the areas identity 
pages account manage for instance change password they use this partial status message that's what we will be using so over here let me find everywhere I have this you find the I haven't used find and replace enough on Rider. I have no idea where's the replace. Where's the replace? So replace should okay. There's a lot. I could have done this from the get-go and instead of wasting time. But like you've seen in these couple of epi episodes, doing this by hand is a waste of time by itself. scaffolding is the way to go okay so it's done and now let's check the parcel that they use status message it's over here model is a string okay let's just copy let's just copy the page so account status message Okay, so this is just like this, no special, nothing to say it's a partial, nice, and over here is the, we just say partial, don't know what happened to the mouse, but okay. So let's let's change the password. Okay, now it's a bit prettier. And instead of just that div, we have this partial message partial view that we use everywhere. Okay, I think it's uh, all. So in this episode of review of the, of the last one, check changes I've done, adjustments, email to factor, migrations, client side libraries, layout, partial. Seems okay. Hopefully this video ended up smaller than the last one. So hope to see you in the next one. See yes. <laughs>